first known instance of the term middleman dates back to 1677 when it referred to people who would facilitate trade in corn, animals, minerals, and textiles. A few years later, the phrase cutting out the middleman would be applied to the banking industry, specifically to consumers investing in stocks and bonds directly instead of going through a private bank. In economics, cutting out the middleman is known as disintermediation. So what is disintermediation? I'm glad you asked. The disintermediation process is a concept from the study of supply chain economics. A supply chain is basically the network of parties involved in taking a product from a supplier to a customer. This means for any product in any market, the supply chain starts with the raw materials that are supplied to a manufacturer and distributed to a wholesaler and or a retailer before being purchased by a customer. Disintermediation simply means the removal or consolidation of one or multiple parts of the supply chain, aka cutting out the middleman in that supply chain. Many people are middlemen or middle persons by trade. Anyone who takes a commission is a middleman. People like real estate agents, car salesmen, mortgage brokers, investment bankers, these are all examples of middlemen. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, Sonny Birch is a middleman who deals with buyers and suppliers in the black market. He has been helping Hope Van Dyne and her father Hank Pym in acquiring illegal components for a quantum lab they are building. In a market like this where anonymity is required, it is crucial to have a middleman. The primary advantage of a middleman is that he is able to bring trust to the transaction. His reputation relies on his ability to vet the buyers or sellers that he represents and to establish relationships with as many interested parties as possible. What do you want? Relationships are built on trust, Hope. And I want our relationship to have a strong foundation. Our relationship? My business landscape has been shifting, Hope. Hell's Field and Hydra don't even exist anymore, but now Hank Pym. Hank Pym is a real opportunity. Do you have a point? Oh, you think that I don't know what you've been building with all this quantum technology? Now, you can forget nanotech, forget AI, forget cryptocurrency. Quantum energy is the future. It's the next gold rush. That's all. I want in hope. So as a gesture of goodwill, I have taken the liberty of arranging some buyers for your lab. Starting bid, one billion dollars. Thank you, Sonny, really. But my father and I have something slightly more pressing than starting a business. So I'll just take the component as arranged. My buyers don't take no for an answer. So we are either in business together, or we aren't in business together. Then I guess we aren't. In more transparent industries, disintermediation has been a primary part of any disruption. Examples include Amazon.com, which removed wholesalers and retailers completely, or Netflix, which changed the way we watch movies and destroyed video stores in the process. Also, companies like Uber and Airbnb, which have transformed the industries of transportation and hospitality without actually owning their own cars or rooms. Speaking of Netflix, their new Australian fantasy drama Tidelands is based in the small fictional fishing village of Orphalan Bay, located somewhere on the coast of southeast Queensland. The show revolves around the McTeer family, mostly their internal family drama, but also their interactions with the rest of the citizens of Orphalan Bay, as well as a group of hippies who live in the commune nearby. These hippies are called the Tidelanders and are able to breathe underwater because they are half merpeople. Although the McTeers are a family of fishermen with their 10-member co-op owning a fleet of fishing trawlers, a small fishery for processing, and a fleet of delivery trucks for distribution, their true cash crop is heroin. The heroin supply chain in Orphalan Bay starts with some mysterious suppliers who possibly are based out of Afghanistan but most likely are headquartered in the infamous Golden Triangle, specifically Myanmar. They take air-dried poppy seed resin, add calcium hydroxide along with a few other chemicals and transform it into brown morphine. They dry it further and add more chemicals to make white heroin blocks. These blocks are put into barrels and shipped out to be dumped somewhere in the Coral Sea. Once dumped, these barrels are picked up from the bottom of the sea by the Tidelanders. The barrels are then delivered to the McTeer operation, who powderize the blocks, mix it with water, and create packaged ice cubes. These ice cubes are used to cover their raw fish for sales in the market. They take the fish and the heroin ice cubes to their distributor, China Tom, who buys it from them to sell in the streets of Brisbane or other towns nearby. This is what the current supply chain looks like. There is, however, a competitor in town, a distributor who is trying to disintermediate the supply chain. 
His name is Stolen. Stolen's plan is to cannibalize the entire supply chain. He takes over distribution in the area by eliminating China Tom. At this point, the McTeer Enterprise is worried that they are next. So Augie McTeer goes to meet Adriel, the leader of the Tidelanders, to ask not to do business with the Stolen. Stolen, however, already has plans to work directly with the Tidelanders and eventually bring that part of the supply chain into his own organization. The less parties involved, the more profit the distributor is able to make. So how much does Stolen stand to make? According to the UN, the street value of heroin in Australia is $50.40 per gram. Also according to the UN, there is a 30-fold price increase across the heroin supply chain. If we assume that each part of the supply chain takes an equal profit margin percentage, we can figure out the revenue and the cost at each point of the supply chain. If Stolen is able to successfully disintermediate the supply chain, he stands to increase his profit margin from 58% to 92%, meaning for every million dollars he makes in sales of drugs, he could keep as much as $920,000. Minus, of course, some costs associated with taking the Tidelander and Mateer services in-house. This is much more than the $580,000 per million he was hiding in his shell company for money laundering prior to disintermediation. One last thing I have to mention. The future of disintermediation is this thing called blockchain. Cryptocurrencies are based on blockchain technology, so when Sonny mentions Get cryptocurrency. he is a middleman talking about a tool that will destroy middlemen. How ironic. We will cover this in detail in the future. If there are any TV shows, movies, topics you would like covered in the future, please let me know in the comments. Please subscribe, and for announcements, check out my Twitter at Nexace Network and Instagram at Nexace Network. Finally, look out for my Patreon page. Totally. I own 300 micro rubles, a Russian cryptocurrency I heard about on Facebook, which currently you can only use to buy a Chechen party drug called Frankenstein.